From Ix Art Park in Charlottesville, Virginia, I'm Joe Vina. This is your Daily Creature. Thanks for being here, friends, and I am so excited about today's animal. As you know, we continue with Aquatic Week here on The Daily Creature, and today's animal does not disappoint. I'm so excited. I can't contain myself. I want you to guess what this eight-legged animal is, okay? She lives in the ocean. Yes, eight legs. I want you to guess. Brilliant creature with excellent capabilities of camouflage. Eight legs. Can you guess it? Not this guy. Sorry, Squiddo. That's ten legs. Can you guess? I'm going to give you a hint. Octopus. Ah, I always do that. I meant to give you a hint. I gave you the answer. But friends, what could be more exciting? I love octopus. Brilliant creatures. And you don't have to take my word for it. You may not know this. I'm not a scientist. Friends, I'm not a, I'm not a zoologist. I'm not a biologist. I'm, am I a marine biologist? Mm, not. I'm not. I'm not a marine biologist. No. You don't have to take my word for how wonderful these creatures are. Go out into the world, onto the internet, grab a book, learn more about these animals. You'll find out all kinds of fantastic facts from individuals who might be a little more qualified than I to present them. But listen, I'm happy to be a creative springboard for you. So look into the octopus and find out how smart they are. Search smart octopus. You're going to find out some really really, really cool stuff. Friends, let's jump right in. Drawn to the octopus. And this is a memory illustration. And by that, I mean, we're not going to use a reference as we have before. No picture of an octopus to start. We're simply going to go with what we know about the octopus, what's in our heads. And it may give this octopus a bit of a cartoonish style. I am using my sketchbook, but any old paper will do. And I'm using a graphic one size micron, which is a bit like a marker. Gives me a nice thick line. And this is gonna be a pretty simple octopus drawing. There are the eight legs or tentacles as they're called. Uh, There's the large head, and there are the eyes, and that's what I'm going to focus on. And uh, sometimes I like to start with an eye to kind of ground me, and I'm going to give him a kind of a funny sideways pupil there in the eye. And I'm going to go a little eyelid and eyebrow. And I'd like to build out my octopus from here. So I think I'm going to make our octopus a profile so we just see him. From the one side and I've kind of drawn that big head and I'm doing a little kind of a almost like a little roll of of fat on the neck there and now I'm going to bring up one of those tentacles and I find it challenging when it comes to the octopus tentacle challenging to Pre-think each of them, you know, where are they going to go? Are they going to cross over or behind each other? And because I've chosen to use a pen as opposed to a pencil, there may be challenges ahead in how I arrange these, these tentacles. Remember, well, if you're drawing with a pencil, you can get in there and you can erase and redraw. But in this case, when you're playing for keeps, so to speak, it's good to plan, right? I've got one, two, three down, five tentacles to go. If you're anything like me, when you're drawing an octopus, you're often going through this. You're counting, you're like, ah, I gotta get one more in there. How do I do it? I'm gonna bring one around this way and sort of make it a little ziggy, a little zaggy. Four, we're halfway through, yeah? I think this one is going to kind of come down here and we'll get a nice spiral going. And this is the fifth tentacle. And you know, I think already we're looking nicely like an octopus without a reference. That's nice. I feel good about my, my octopus in my mind's eye, the octopus in my imagination. 
So this is what this octopus is. Again, there's no reference around me here. And I count five tentacles. I'm going to bring another one from behind here. We can't really see where it starts, but I want to be smart about where I put it in terms of the composition of my octopus, you know, to kind of spread the tentacles out here and there. Six. How many more? And I really should be finishing tentacles, but I can't help myself. I want to go in here and start to get some little little details going, little shading on the bottom of each tentacle. And uh, I'm also thinking about all of those suckers. The octopus has a lot of suckers on each tentacle, those little sort of round bits. I'm going to draw a few of them here. Now that I've begun, I have to really commit to them in some way or another. And uh, that should be challenging as well. Without the reference, I'm, I'm kind of lost on the suckers. But I do know there are a lot of suckers here for this octopus. P.T. Barnum would like it. You can do the suckers kind of going from one side of the tentacle, and then it's like it turns around. So you sort of see them here, and you can hint to them as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's right. I'm not quite there yet. I've got two more to do, two more tentacles, that is, to add to my octopus. I'm kind of wishing I could squeeze another eye in there, too. I'm, I'm not liking just the one eye. You think I can do it? Can I fit the eye there? Should I try to fit the eye? Should I try the eye? Try to fit the eye? I'm going to try the eye. I'm going to try and fit the eye. I'm going to go boom. Okay. Now, I'm going to add that same style, kind of a cephalopod pupil. And then to match this eye, I'm just going to add some of these lids and brows, which is really little curved lines. Some symmetry between the two eyes, I think is nice. And let's see, I'm going to add another tentacle kind of coming through here, a little spiral there. And let's say we've got one more directly down here. And I go a little shorter with these because you assume you're not seeing part of the tentacle that is behind the octopus. And you know, I, from there, it's really, I think, just about adding little details. Now this doesn't, to me, as I look at it, it doesn't look exactly like an octopus from nature. But I can also look at this drawing and say, hey, that is certainly an octopus. I'm going to put some bubbles around. We'll put a little water line, let's say, here. Like that. Some bubbles. Bubbles up at the top. Seabirds, right? They're out there. Can you? Seabirds. Seabirds out there. And bubbles come up in little trails sometimes, too, right? They have little sort of. Anything else swimming around in here? How about a little eel down here? Quick eel. Nobody said there'd be an eel. And I'm I'm also going fully from the imagination with this eel, so I'm I'm not entirely sure. I couldn't tell you what species of eel this is. I wanna make him kind of zigzaggy to look like he's he's going through the water there. I don't want a little something like that as well. There's an eel. He's making some bubbles. Back to our octopus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're good. We're square there. And there you more or less have it, friends. A fun octopus straight out of my head. As a challenge, go ahead and draw an octopus, but just use your imagination. Just use what you and your life's experience have accrued when it comes to octopus knowledge. Does that make sense? But for those of you that are saying, hey, what about the reference, buddy? Can you just show me some pictures of octopi from nature? I say to you, sure thing, 
No problem. My pleasure. So let's just do this here. And if you're if you're reference crazy, you can go ahead and pause the screen as soon as I get this situated. Pick a cephalopod and draw it. That's right, cephalopods. All of these guys are from the cephalopod family. And we got cousin squid over here, and we got the nautilus, and we got the cuttlefish, we've got them all. Fun facts about a few of these. Let's see if we can zoom on down and, and move around a bit. Special thanks to the the reference book that we're using here, which is, of course, the Encyclopedia of Animals, a complete visual guide. We used it yesterday. We've used it again today. And boy, is it comprehensive. Big uh, shout out, quick shout out to the Nautilus, the chambered Nautilus, which is your most primitive of the cephalopods. Um, his ancestors go way, way back. And he's just so cool looking, right? It's not his show, of course, but hey, research that on your own time. Goodness gracious, cute creature or nightmarish vision? And you see him here, he's got a whole kind of a thing going. It's like a shell, a squid-like creature inside. What fun, what fun. Here's our guy down here, the common octopus. For you fans of the reference, there we go. Right next to giant squid right giant squid do you really exist i think you do Ooh, here's a fun one the deep sea vampire squid interesting fun fact here this is the only animal one of one of the only known animals that can actually use magic uh operate with a few low level spells and this creature is also actually a vampire uh that sucks blood from fish and really anyone, scuba divers, anyone who gets near it. So most of these creatures can shoot ink. Um, cuttlefish is a fun one. There we go. Look at him. They all have a similar kind of eye. They've got those eyes. The eyes are prominent in these creatures. Here's another funny little, he's kind of like a, looks like a squash squid, right? Daikon radish on top. Squid on the bottom. That can't be a real animal. Folks, uh, I'm just receiving this information. Um, big apologies. What I said earlier about the deep sea vampire squid is not true. It uh, is not actually a vampire. Uh, there is no proof of vampires, I'm afraid, not scientifically. And it cannot cast spells, not even low level spells. It does not have any apparent magical ability at all, in fact. So big apologies there. Information, of course, is sensitive and can be used in, in terrible ways when misdirected. So there we go. If you want to know more about the deep sea vampire squid or any of these cephalopods, I encourage you to set sail and seek them out. Seek out your creatures. Oh, sick octopus, sick cephalopod, sick mollusk. Artists, before we jump into discussion about seeking out your creatures and its importance, I'd like to just clear up a little something here. What happens when you have more than one octopus. How do you say it? What's the plural for octopus? This was bugging me a bit with all this octopus about making octopi and drawing octopuses. What's the correct way to say many octopuses? Um, and octopuses is in fact a legitimate way to go. You can say octopuses. You can say octopi if you want to, but octopi is technically incorrect because the word octopus is derived from Greek roots, octo meaning eight, pos meaning uh, feet or foot, eight-legged, eight-footed creature, right? Octopus, uh, to add the I at the end as a plural would be using a Latin pluralization, right? So you wouldn't want to apply that to the Greek word. So you go octopuses, or I found out even octopodes, I think is also possible, octopodes, um, octopi, 
go ahead and say it, it's a fun word, but technically not the right way to go, according to the research that I've done. You may find different, hope that's cleared it up a bit for you, because what do you do? You've got a pool full of octopus. You want to invite your friends over and say, look at all this octopi, octopuses, octopodes. I hope this was helpful. Somehow I think maybe it wasn't. Friends, seek out your creatures. In your home, if you've decided to draw an octopus or sculpt an octopus, or even tell a story about an octopus, think about this. Are there any octopodes in your house that you can grab to look at, to use as a reference? So I've got two wonderful examples. One is an actual physical thing, and the other is a poem. And we'll leave the poem to second. We'll start first with this guy right here. Hey, Sherms. I call him Sherms, full name Sherman. Uh, to be technically true here, I've borrowed this. Sherms is on loan from my son's collection of, I believe they call them stuffies in the kid community, but stuffed animals. Um, my sons, Jack and Henry, possess quite a few stuffies. And uh, Sherms has fast become one of my favorites. He's a beautifully made stuffed animal. And he, of course, is an octopus. We count these legs. One, two, three, four. They got a nice spring to them. That's a fine stuffy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It tracks. It checks out. There you go, Sherms. I like the way he sits like that. You could set something like Sherms up grab that sketch pad and really draw and even kind of take a look and say, huh, what's the underneath look like? The head hangs back this way. That's interesting. The eyes are on the side. Sherms is pretty uh, accurate, I think, as far as, as an actual octopus might look. So super cool. I love his color. Of course, we know he changes color, right? Technically, the stuff he does not change color, but octopi in general have amazing capabilities with camouflage look into it. Okay, second part of this seek out your creatures bit, look for writing about your creatures. There are great, great writers at your fingertips on the computers, in the books, and you can find those writers and you can find out what they have had to say, both in factual and fictional form, about our creatures. So I found a wonderful little poem by the great Ogden Nash. Check this out. It's a great one. Tell me, O oh octopus, I begs, is those things arms or is they legs? I marvel at the octopus. If I were thou, I'd call me us. Think about that one. That's fun. A little nonsensical. Uh, it does play with words a bit. Lovely poem. Thank you, Ogden, wherever you are. Playquarium, an ongoing undersea adventure, part two. So friends, this is a quick and rather simple step that we're going to employ with our Clayquarium. Here's what you'll need. Do you have a little bit of paint anywhere? Any kind of paint will do, and really the color also doesn't quite matter. Uh, I've got here a sort of an extensive but rather messed up watercolor set that we'll use with it. I'll need just a little bit of Water. There's a nice heavy dish of water. I recommend using this when you're painting a heavier dish of water if you're employing water, only because it's less likely to spill. There we go. And I've got, of course, a paintbrush. What we're going to do is create a kind of a wash. We call it a wash, but a light, light bit of color that will have a kind of a watery feel to it. We're going to put that into, here we go. You remember our clay aquarium from yesterday going to put that all over our paper. So you may note first and foremost, a grease spot. That is from our clay shark that we laid there yesterday. Your oil-based clay will, big surprise, leave a little oil sometimes, just as a slice of pizza will uh, in the pizza box. You've seen it before. It's a grease spot. Should we change out the paper? We could. In this case, I'm not going to. I plan to put an octopus right here. We're going to make a little clay octopus for our clay aquarium. First, we're gonna get this wash on the back of it to create the look of a kind of a flowy water feel. I'm going to remove the plants only for now. I'll leave our 
ocean floor for the time being. And uh, I'm going to work in some of the blues, which are located right here. I'm going to hit that water just ever so slightly. Uh, I'm going to go with um, this, this light blue sort of to the side. And adding a bit more water and a bit more water. I do not want a very concentrated color here. I want more of the hint of color. And I'm just going to I'm going to lay it on my paper. I'm going to lay it in there. And I'm kind of hoping that some of this might help to mask that oil that got on there, that sharky grease spot. A bit more. There we go. And... You know, friends, what I'm trying to do is create the illusion of and the hint, the hint of water that we have a sort of a, a flowy, liquidy form to our backdrop here, which is sort of the water is sort of everywhere, right? And our creatures that will be in and around here once we add them, they'll be amongst this this flowy sort of background. I keep the colors light by continually adding a bit of water. And I say colors, but really it's just one color. Now, of course, this blue is melding just a bit with our, our kind of pinkish purple that we chose as the color of paper. I'm getting right down to the rocks here, too. So we're filling in this area. You want to avoid getting any paint on your rocks. Unless, of course, you want paint on your rocks. Who am I to say avoid getting paint on your rocks? Paint your rocks if you want to. Although this is not great paint for rock painting because it's watercolor. You may want to go acrylic if you're painting rocks, but I digress. Friends, simple as it seems, that's that for, you know, the structure of our clay aquarium for today. Knock out this step here. You can always put your plants back. Again, I shouldn't assume that you have plastic plants just sitting around. If you do, and the person to whom they belong doesn't mind your use of them, well, get in there. It can be tricky to stick them back in. I'm trying to just press the plant. There we go. I kind of like the way they twist, right? It's got that watery sort of feel. Again, those sound effects are helpful. Don't knock them. You can add more plants should you wish. I want this paint and water to dry. I'm going to move the clay aquarium for now. So much more fun to come with that, but goodbye paints as well. Let's take a quick look at some clay and let's focus on creating a little clay octopus. We have color choices. I'm trying to find something that'll stand out against the uh, against the backdrop that we have in our clay aquarium. We're going to unwrap this clay right before your very eyes. Look at that. Brand new, fresh clay. This brand of clay, the name escapes me, I'm afraid, but get it at Michael's. It's, it's delightful stuff. You like that color for the octopus? So do I. Red. Stark red octopus. Vermilion. There's one in vermilion. Okay. Here we go, friends. Little tube of clay. We're just going to get our hands going right there. We're going to soften and soften and soften. And as we did with our drawing exercise, we're going to work from memory on this guy. Sans reference. And I'm going to start with a kind of a lump, a potato shape, just like that. And we're going to break it into halves. Two pieces the same size. And let's bring this just a bit closer with a better view. We're going to set this piece aside and we're going to start with this piece. We're just going to roll it a bit. That's a flat hand, fingers together. Get those pincher fingers in there. You're going to create a kind of a potato shape, eh? another one, a pill, like so. 
with this piece, rather simply roll again, but this time, friends and neighbors, roll out a worm shape, like so. Take that worm shape, break it in half. You get two pieces about the same size. Break the halves in half. You get four pieces the same size, AKA quarters. Crazy as it sounds, friends. Break the halves of the halves in half and count it out, dudes. And you should have how many pieces? You should have eight pieces. You've split that piece into eighths. And then you can probably guess what's next. Roll it out. You may not need the full hand for rolling. Roll out the leg, the foot, the arm, as we know it is called the tentacle. And get all eight of those tentacles rolled out. may take a moment. My recommendation to you, creative marine biologists, is that you roll your tentacles with the base and the end in mind. By that I mean the base of the tentacle connects to the body of the octopus, right? But the end of it should be a bit thinner, almost as if it comes to a point. Take your time to roll out each of these tentacles. Voila, eight tentacles, let's check out the body. Let's also consider that we're going to be creating our octopus in a somewhat flat fashion to fit into our playquarium. I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna flatten it just a bit, I'll lay it here, and I'm gonna use my pincher fingers to give it a bit of a curve. Your eyes of the octopus, they're gonna be kind of around here. And without further ado, I'm going to connect and smooth. And I'm going to connect a leg and I'm going to smooth it into the body. Smooth the smaller pieces into the larger pieces, friends. And my recommendation to you, my suggestion, and hey, it's just a suggestion because as you know, this is one way to make an octopus, but Dear viewer, there are many ways to make an octopus. You have to find the way of the octopus that is right for you. I've got four on there already. I've got four to add. Given again, the way I wish to position this guy, I'm gonna stick a few of these tentacles behind him. Funny, that looks like a strange little monkey hand, doesn't it? I love when you can see some other completely unrelated element in your work, like a monkey hand. Look for the monkey hand, friends, because it will often lead you down the path of a completely new project. The trouble comes when you start that project without finishing the one you're working on. I now have eight tentacles connected. I did four in the back, four in the front. Again, thinking about this, this sort of position, this is where we're gonna dress our octopus to look good. And now comes the fun part. Artists, I simply go in here with the tips of my pincher fingers. Now, now that I've attached those legs and taken the time to, I can really begin to adjust them. Pincher fingers here, I wanna get a slightly thinner look to the, the base of that head. I'm gonna bring back, give that leaning look. I'm going to snag a little bit. Oh, I pinched his head. He's okay. We touch it back up. I roll up a little ball shape and I pop it there on the side. We're just going to see one eye on this octopus. octopus. And uh, I think I'll use a bead. Forgive me for not mentioning beads earlier, but if you have a bead, use a bead. If you have some extra clay, I just need one. Come on, bead. If you have some extra clay, you can make make an eye out of clay. You could also simply pop a hole in there, right? That, that almost works just in and of itself, just a little hole with good old Mr. Pencil. I'm gonna use the hole that I made and I'm going to take that little black bead you see, and I'm gonna just pop it in there and you can't beat that little shine. 
What a lovely, simple little octopus we have there. And we're going to slide back in our clay aquarium here. And we're going to set it up. And oh, look at that. That's delightful. Our closer shot with the camera gives us really a glimpse into our clay aquarium. And let's put our octopus right there to cover the shark's grease spot. Again, we're going to put our octopus on top of the shark's grease spot. It's great to always have at least one sentence that you say a day be a sentence that just will never be said again and has probably never been said before. Friends, that's a clay octopus in the clay aquarium. Stay tuned for more clay aquarium antics. It should come as no shock to puss that we have run out of time for today's episode. Uh, I know what you're saying. You're saying, hey, Joe, what about that clay shark? I'm going to talk about sharks for a moment. Is that okay, Sherms? Sherms says it's okay. What about that clay shark you promised? You talked about a clay shark tutorial. Where is that? Listen, friends, it's not a sham. Simply go to Instagram. That's right. Good news, artists. You can now go to the Ix Art Park Instagram to get little updates on the daily creature, fun tidbits, and even pop-up projects. I can't recommend it enough. It's just one more way to interface with your daily creature. Please do it. I think you will be excited by it, and I think it'll be fun. Friends, Aquatic Week continues here at the Daily Creature. Tomorrow's creature, I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to tune in and check it out, okay? Lots of fun, though. That's a daily creature promise. And from Ix Art Park in Charlottesville, Virginia, I'm Joe Vina. This is Sherms. Stay creative. Mm -hmm.